you've just made an impassioned, personal kind of life history statement of the terror that you've witnessed when abortion is illegal. Kathleen Sullivan has made an impassioned, terror-filled statement of what happens when you see that arm go down the well, tube, when you see that, see that. But, but let me ask you a question. Do you think that you could ever, with the same passion, make the statement that she made about that? And do you think that you could ever summon the compassion to make the statement that she made about the, the, the uh, coat hanger yes, victims? Yes, because you know what? I would like to take every one of those gals who come in and say, don't kill your baby. Don't kill your baby. There's somebody else. Those babies can be twice loved. Those here's, babies can be loved the by the mo no. birth mother giving them life and by another couple here's raising the, them. John, here's the difference. Don't kill those babies. John, Others are happy and willing John, to be able to raise them if the mother can. I care a whole lot more about the people already born. My first impression was, can it be that bad? Is it, what is a painting? And mm -hmm. when I saw that painting, I, I just I couldn't believe it. I was in dismay. You know, I, I just, uh, the first reaction was, get rid of it. What were your thoughts about how you should proceed, given your unhappiness? Well, it? based upon the fact that uh, the picture had been put back on that wall, remove it. It was my leader, a man I hold in high esteem. And, and remove it under what circumstances? What was your idea of due process? The due process was to take it down. Because we had already talked through other city councilmen and a state representative to Mr. Uh, Jones. And who should take it down? He should take it down. Who should take it uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. the Jones president of the institute. And if he doesn't, then who should take it down? We would. We being the all of them. The city council. The city council should literally take it, take it down. down. Yes. Let me just uh, follow that up to see if I've got the principal at stake then. Uh, uh, so that if you don't like a book in the public library that would be offensive to people, would you say go in and take it out of the library? That's a little bit different story. That's a little bit different. And I say that because there were many books that offended me. But there was a different situation here. I'm here, saying, where do the courts apply? Why don't they apply in this case? But there's a moral responsibility here that transcends, as far as I'm concerned, transcends the courts, transcends the First Amendment. So you just take the law in your own hands? If you want to call it in the, your own hands, we have a law. The law of common sense, the law of morality, the law of decency transcends the First Amendment. Politics was a staple on Chicago tonight, and John went toe-to-toe -to -toe with plenty of politicians. T tell us about the relationship with Michael Tate. This is a longtime friend of yours, right? Well, no, I mean, it's a fr not a friend. He's one who has lived in Bridgeport. He has uh, uh, bid on contracts in the city of Chicago for many, many years. And uh, he's, he, he's compared to anyone else. It doesn't matter who they are. He's reported to have purchased yeah. land at 39th and Ashland for 900000 and 91 then sold it back to the taxpayers for $1.8 million, spent 500000 for another parcel of land, then leased it back to the city for $2.5 million. That's where people, when they read that well, in the press, say, but, and he's he's uh, Rich Daly's pal, and yeah, that's no, how no, you all get All of a sudden, you made my friend to a pal, to right. an associate, to, to, you know, all but of a sudden, he's he? living... how, how often do you see him? Maybe twice a year, three times a year at the most. So not dinner every week no, is reported in the press? Week. No, not dinner every week. No, not how whatsoever. Much, how much money has he contributed to your campaigns? Well, I don't know. It, it's basically fully reported, and all the reports are there. I only take $1,500 uh, from any individual. If you, if you lost, uh, of all the people who are supposed to be connected to you, and now all connection. Of, that's right, but I'm saying <laughs> well, all I'll those $1,500 went yeah. away, what difference would it make politically to you? If this is all cleaned up and there's no more favoritism and no more cronies, what difference will it make to you politically? What? It won't make any difference, will it? Well, none whatsoever. It doesn't matter who contributes. I mean, contributes. it doesn't add up to that much money, does it? It doesn't matter who contributes to me. I mean, it, you think I, I'm going to be someone gives me a contribution that I'm willing to sell my soul and the soul of the city of Chicago out. I think you're greatly mistaken. I, I work too hard to become the mayor of the city of Chicago. If I love the city, if you love someone, you don't sell anyone out. When, when we ask questions, if we can get a briefer answer so that we can get some business done well, tonight. Uh, in the, in the uh, sense John, of, in the no, 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 I mean in the sense that I was asking, saying, no, I was asking about, about, about the cigarette tax and, and not asking and for a filibuster. No, that wasn't a question. filibuster. That was that. Somebody might say, look, uh, Mr. Stroger, who had the stroke, had his organization. And we respect your desire to continue to have some political power in that framework. But why send his son in? Why not take somebody like, oh, say, uh, Bill Beavers, who has experience that makes 
Young Stroger looked like mine. an amateur. It was mine for the asking. It was mine for the taking. But I'm 71 years old. I'm too old. How long could I keep it? You know how Danny Davis got in the race? All of them males said Danny Davis get in the race. And I told Danny Davis, you too old. Bobby Steele was too old. We need a young man. If we don't start moving our young people along, we're not going to have anything. But did you know the outrage that would accompany young Strogers being appointed to Yeah, him? I knew the outrage. I, but I didn't care. I figured we had the votes. Black folks got the votes to do what they want to do. And I've said it a number of times. And we pulled together and we showed everybody that we're going to do just like you've been doing all this time. White folks have been doing it. Why can't we do it? And that's what we did this time. I don't think anybody intends to pursue this as a sex case, but as a perjury case. It's not a Lewinsky matter. It's a Clinton matter. Now, the spin that the Democrats want to employ is to bring it back to a sex case. Uh, but uh, I know for, from the Republican perspective, we are not considering that. We are considering this as whether or not telling the truth under oath is important or not. No, but I'm saying, is there the possibility that being unleashed is a torrent of sexual witch hunting? Not, which by, not by the Republicans. We won't do no, it. No, I mean by the whole story. You mean the by whole the media? Episode. You mean media, by the media? You mean all of us. Is there at play something that will dampen the ability of good people to run in the future because they say, well, I had indiscretions in my life. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the, the whole uh, tenor, the attitude uh, in the arena is a lot different today. And uh, it, it'd be hard to be honest and tell some young person to go into politics as a career. I never thought I would say that, but uh, uh, it, it, the fun has drained out of it. The, uh, the, the, uh, noble challenge and it becomes a question of survival and and that has to change now what do you do about it you don't walk away you don't resign from the human race you f you stay in there and you fight and you try to make things better i think our democracy and the people who died to preserve it and to acquire it for us deserve no less there are some who say that your own discretions of the past make it hypocritical for you to even remotely stand in judgment on this matter. Could, John, it be, could it be argued that your own human experience perhaps gives you a maturity that makes you better qualified to judge these matters? Uh, I frankly have said all I'm going to say about that. Had I known you were going to bring it up, I wouldn't have sat for this interview. It's a, something I'm very sorry about and very ashamed of. And, uh, I don't, uh, I don't care to discuss it. I remember when we first met, back when you were running for president, nobody knew who you were. You had about 3 or 4% in the polls. I remember you came to the Channel 11 Public News Center. That was our <laughs> first nightly news downtown. You walked in, you shook every hand, every technician, every... I noticed you did the same thing today. And I thought, this guy's got something. You were a, and I assume are, a strong believer in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. nonviolence movement, yes. nonviolent yes. movement, mm -hmm. and yet it is said that you pack a gun. Nobody doesn't see a gun for me. But you're saying you don't carry a gun. That's a mythology. That they just got to guess another one of those myths about lack what's under the hat. <laughs> but you're not. But when you say it's a mythology. You're not answering my question directly. You want me to mess with the myth? I mean, this is part of the personality. They said, she, you know, it's like, they said, she got a gun. No one ever saw a gun. Someone just screamed, she have a gun. And everybody started running because, I mean, it was a big fight in there. And everybody said, she have a gun. So it'll ready. be a continuing, somebody thinking they may come after you may not really know the answer to this question <laughs> and think twice They about. don't need to know this, do they? John Calloway, a legendary journalist and friend who will be dearly missed. My deepest thanks to Ann and Liz and Dan and Nicholas and all of Sandy's family for all their love and support over the years. I'm John Calloway. Thank you and good night. My sweet embrace over. My sweet embrace over.